What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project extended ROM version 4 of Xtended XT, official build based on Android 13 and the build date here is 6th February 2023. I have been using this ROM for a couple of days and here is my full review of this particular ROM. And yes, I have tried the previous version which was 3.5. And in my opinion, that was one of the best ROMs for the Redmi Note 10 Pro that you could type. And this time too, I have to say, this is again amazing experience overall of using this ROM. If you don't know how to flash this ROM, you can check out the flashing guide from the description box below. And this ROM of course includes G apps. Here is how the Android version section looks like. It has this beautiful animation and we have this extended logo up top. The Android version is Android 13. You will get the Android 13 Easter egg and they definitely look dope with these emojis and stuff. Let me go back. The security patch over here is not the latest. We are still getting the January security patch, not quite February yet. But the extended version is showing as XT version 4 official, you can see. And the device is of course sweet, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The maintainers are Suresh and Niranjan. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. We have the build date here mentioned as 6th February 2023. The stock kernel here is the 4.14 Pikachu kernel here it shows. Now jumping into the system settings, this is how it looks like. We get the sweet parts on the bottom and if you go into it, we have the high refresh rate 60 to 120 or 120 hertz all day long. I have been using it with the 120 to 120. That is the 120 hertz all day long. And we have this other refresh rate profile changing option per app 60 to 120 hertz. And let me go back. We have the de or the anti-flicker mode. You can turn it on from right here. Then we have the thermal profiles too. And you can change the thermal profiles to the benchmarks and stuff if you want. Let me go back. We also get the me sound and answer over here. And I have been using it with a youth region, but you can choose any other presets that you'd like. We also get the sound presets, bass booster, bass reduction, etc. option. And the sound scenario you can change as well. Then we have this enable hi-fi option too. So if you have a really great pair of headphones, you can definitely use this option. That will increase your sound quality drastically. And I have to say the sound quality overall of this ROM has been great with the headphone jack, the Bluetooth headsets, and even with the speakers and earpiece, it has been really good. No issues whatsoever with the sound quality. There is also the clear speaker option. You can use it if you want. We have a system updater and you can check for updates from right here. Let me show you the home screen. Well, this is how it looks like. You get extended home launcher over here. And on this, we have some customizations like the misc settings. We have this blur depth, action toast, and we have this use taskbar, etc. options. Let me go back. We have the recent panel customization. You can change the background opacity if you want. And in the app drawer, we have this row height, background opacity, and the icon labels in drawer customization. In the home screen settings, we have the lock layout, double tap to sleep, wallpaper zooming and scrolling. We have the hot seat background, Google search bar, themed icons, even the corner radius you can customize. And these are the customizations you can see. And of course, we have the icon customization. Then we have the icon size, font size, and the max lines per label customization. Let me show you by going into the home screen. To the left of it, we do get the Google's Discover page. They are working perfectly fine. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer and scrolling on it, it's just buttery smooth experience. And you can search for any particular app that you are looking for. Just swiping down on the home screen will get you to the notification and the quick setting panel as well. In the light theme, the quick setting panel stays light. So I like it. And we have the toggles, of course, I'll show you that. But here, let me talk about the apps a little bit because this ROM does have the stock AOSP kind of dialer. We do get this stock dialer, which is the AOSP kind of dialer. And on this, we do get a call recording option and stuff. And we also do have AOSP messaging app, gallery app, all those things. Even a contact app is there and the via browser is there by default. But the call recording over here is not that perfect in my opinion. It sometimes doesn't work. So you need to keep that in mind. And in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot, the lock app option. Then we have this clear all option and the close one particular app option. Now let's talk about the widgets. Well, the Google clock widget and stuff is working fine and the animations for it is working great. Also, I've added the weather widget, but for some reason, I could not simply find the battery widget over here. But yeah, other normal Google widgets will be working perfectly fine. Even like the subscriber account widget is working great for me at least. And here, let me now show you the quick setting panel toggles. We get the brightness slider. You can change the position of it and the bottom and stuff from the customization panel. And this is how the power menu looks like. If you tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And we also have this edit toggle option and these are the toggles that you can edit and add. And let me show you which ones I have. I have the Wi-Fi mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle and stuff. 
and it shows the battery percentage even on the status bar no issues with that and we have the flashlight dark theme auto rotate night light always on display toggle and you can also toggle it for charge if you want and here let me show you the hotspot the battery saver and the screen recording is also there we have this device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time lower quality for smaller file size and the big file size limit all these features are there for the screen recording now here we have the battery saver do not disturb google home control data saver one-handed mode and the ambient display as well now here we also have this refresh rate toggle so that's really good to have and we have the sound toggle too if you tap and hold on it you will get the volume panel just like this and you can click up and down the volume just like this and of course you can switch the phone's profile to mute or something if you want from right here and there is the airplane mode nearby share etc options now let me show you the stock camera well you are getting a miui camera right out of the box and this miui camera is perfectly working you should not worry about anything there is the documents mode and stuff everything should be working fine here with the enhanced mode and stuff you can shoot documents if you want normal lens switching option if you want to see those yes as you can see it is working great you should not worry about it and also if you are looking for the super macro lens and it is perfectly in focus let me show you the picture that i just took and yeah the pictures are properly optimized even for portrait selfies you should not worry about it let me just take a quick one so as you can see right now it has processed it's 16 megapixel right now and yes if you zoom it in yes there is good amount of detail and the background blur is there if you are noticing it so yeah portrait selfies and stuff are working perfectly fine in the video settings we have up to 1080p 30 fps option for the front camera and if you switch to the rear camera we have up to 4k 30 fps option if you shoot it that way and even the pro mode there is the video settings so you can shoot pro mode videos by controlling white balance focus or shutter speed etc up to 4k 30 fps and of course there is the 1080p 60 fps options and stuff and of course there are also the slow motion vlog mode and the time lapse 61 megapixel mode everything should be working fine here now let's talk customizations well inside extensions you will get amazing amount of customizations and here let me show you first in the ambient decor we have the music ticker edge lighting show always for the edge lighting and stuff and the light color you can also choose then we have this width and stuff for the edge lighting even ambient aod customization is there you can add some text and stuff and change the colors for it in the animations we have the screen of animation you can change it to default here at your scale also we have the animation style changing option then we have this duration and interpolated changing option now in the buttons we have the show volume panel on the left side then in the gestures okay so this is the one-handed mode and stuff as you can see it is working fine we have this power button and call and features like that the quick open camera for me is not quite working i would say because even if i double press the power button it doesn't do anything it just locks the device so that's how it is we have the long press power button toggle torch we have the swipe rig screenshot and stuff all these things are working fine you can share edit and delete the screenshots if you want double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both are there and of course double tap to sleep on the home screen is there i'll show you that now in the lock screen we have the right shortcut and stuff you can change it i guess and we have this lock screen charging info lock screen notification count etc even max lock screen notification you can change in the navigations we have the system navigation gestures and swipe to invoke assistant and stuff is working fine there is the advanced gestures or the extended swipe action you can customize it between these many options you can see and let me go back we have the left edge right edge customization also the pill length you can customize and even there is a haptic feedback if you want to customize that there is the two button and three button navigation you can use it if you want hide ime button space is there then if you scroll down more and go into the notifications we have this heads up you can customize it however you want to show notification count and the reticker options and stuff is there notification panel count is there too then we have this breathing sms missed call and voice calls option in the power menu we have this hide on lock screen so inside lock screen even if you press the power button for a long time the power menu won't be available so that's really great and we have this advanced reboot over here you can enable even other toggles if you want now here in the quick setting panel settings we have this quick setting layout changing option we have this vertical layout and stuff you can enable it even the column and rows you can customize in portrait we have this brightness slider position you can change it to top or bottom show brightness slider in quick quick setting panel and the show auto brightness button you can customize that then we have the edit tiles icon and the other customizations you can see from right here now in the status bar we have the clock and date customization and i did customize it that's why you can see the date and the clock same time over here we have the traffic indicators too you can customize it but i have been using a separate app for this and we have this battery customization as well and i have customized it to the icon landscape r and this is how it looks like with that so you can see the battery icons and we have the battery percentage inside the icon right or left to the icon you can customize that too percentage when charging and stuff 
then we have other customization for the battery icon for the quick setting panel battery bar etc options are there now inside status bar logo we have this extended logo and stuff you can enable it or you can enable any other logos i guess now in the system icons we have this alarm firewall work profile etc and you can customize them then we have this height call strength icon but it's actually not working as you can see right now i have this call strength icon disabled but even then it is showing that call strength icon yes the vaulty icon and stuff showing up perfectly fine you should not worry about it but yeah this call strength icon i don't like it so i disabled it but it's not going away i rebooted the device after disabling it but it's still there we have some more features like these vo wi-fi icon customization then the show projection privacy indicator not really sure how that works but yeah these options are there and you can customize it in the theme room we have the dark theme customization and you can enable it and even the theme color you can change like to pitch black and stuff if you want all of those with the dark theme and in the monitor theme engine we have this custom color picker then we have the use brightness and the colorfulness you can customize then we have this wi-fi icon style and even we get the signal icon styles too then we have the font styles customization plethora of options are there now here we do not get the clock customization of the lock screen as you can see this is the clock on the lock screen that i have been using but yeah i feel the lock screen clock customization should have been there but that's just simply not there can't complain much because this rom is very less in terms of file size even though it comes with g apps the rom's file size is about 1.4 gb which is really really impressive that it comes with new UI camera and stuff with G apps and still the ROM file size manages to be under 1.4 GB. So that is huge in my opinion. So I'm not complaining much, but I have to say the other customizations of this ROM are pretty ample amount of, you should not worry about it. And in the game space, we of course can add any game that you would want and you can just use the game space as you would do with the screen recording and stuff and enabling FPS while gaming, you can do all of those things. Parallel space option is there, you can enable it if you want. And we have the unlock higher FPS in games, charging animation, click to take partial screenshot. If you scroll down more, we have this ignore window secure flags if you want that. And the status bar left and right padding, you can change from right here. Now let's talk about the battery settings. Well, I'm kind of disappointed in the battery settings because in the previous build of this ROM, I actually said that I would love to see the charging cycles at least, but they do not show up yet, I would say. So yeah, in the battery settings, you will only get to see the battery temperature. But then again, there is no charging cycle seeing option or the current or design battery capacity. They simply do not show up. You have to keep that in mind. And we have the battery charge warning and we have the battery optimization. Per app, you can optimize from right here. Then we have the battery manager and stuff, etc. options. Now let me show you the battery life. Well, eight hours of screen on time, you can see from right here which is a good amount of screen on time in my frank opinion and even the screen off or the standby time you can see is about 62 hours that's again a huge amount of number almost three days of standby time and even the combined use you can see it's about 13 hours but definitely i can say after using this rom that it is really really drivable and it will definitely last you for a whole day if you are using it but i use the device too much that's why my combined use is not more than 24 hours but it should be for a normal user now let me show you the health section in here my battery health shows up as 85% which is decent after almost one and a half years of usage I would say and after almost two years of usage of this device I would say the health is good enough and even the fast charging is working perfectly fine you should not worry about fast charging on this particular ROM. In the sound and vibration settings we have this volume call media ring etc controls and of course you can switch the output device from right here just like this and if you scroll down more we have this charging sound dial pad tone screen locking sound etc and we even have this vibration and haptic feedback customization if you want to use all of those we have this in call vibrations as well if you want to use them and even the ringtone vibration pattern you can change but yeah of course some new audio direct and stuff is present in the system settings again and in the display settings this is how it looks we have the brightness level the live display is there we can do the color calibration and even the picture adjustment is there the colors of the display right out of the box is really good i do not have any complaints with that and inside lock screen we have this allow face unlock and i have enabled it for the swipe up and the google home controls is there and we have the show device controls on lock screen and you can control it from the lock device too we have this always show time and info and the wake screen for notification you can enable it or disable it if you want we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and even the lock screen timeout is there we have it up to 30 minutes too and we have this display size and text you can customize it however you want to let me go back we have this bold text then we have the night light 
the colors you can change it to boosted saturated or natural i have been using it with a boosted option the double dive to wake is there and there is the prevent external wake up now in the lock screen again there is the advanced settings but i cannot simply go into it sometimes so that's how it is let me go back we have the extra dim and the auto brightness feature if you want to enable that in the wallpaper styles we have the change wallpaper option by the way i have been using wallpaper wallpaper over here but you can use any other wallpaper i'll list the app in the description this is the default wallpaper that you will get with the extra and xt version 4 looks beautiful in my opinion then we have the dark theme and the themed icons and the app grid is there we have up to 6 by 10 option now inside security in the settings of it we have the quick unlock but one thing i have to say in the more settings you do not get any app lock over here but you do get the app lock feature in the home screen settings and if you go inside it and in the misc settings we have the hidden and protected apps and from here you can actually hide a particular app or you can lock it if you want i do have these particular apps locked like the telegram app and stuff and as you can see this is how this app ui appears whenever you try to open a lock tab and if you tap on the fingerprint scanner as you can see the app particularly opens no issues whatsoever with the app lock i would say now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and in here with this i have the always on display turned on this is why it's appearing sometimes the double dot wake is not working not really sure why but yeah let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed it is working perfectly fine let me show you one more time so yeah the animations and stuff is working perfectly fine you should not worry about it and double tap to sleep in the home screen is working great but of course the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine here now let me show you the face unlock for that i have to go into the lock screen and if i swipe up as you can see there is a black border on the front camera and it unlocks whenever i point the device towards my face let me try one more time by the way if you are wondering the always on display whenever i enable it becomes a little weird with the double tap to wake if you reboot the device that will be fine i guess and let me show you right now as you can see double tap to wake worked perfectly fine and swiping up as you can see face unlock works perfectly fine so no issues whatsoever with the locking and unlocking things on this ROM. Now even though the safety net status right now when I try it, it actually shows failed. But yeah, I have used banking apps, they are actually working fine. I have set it up the SBI card, Google Pay, etc. options. And even the Amazon Pay and stuff is working fine. The UPI apps, I mean, they are working perfectly fine here. You should not worry about it. But yeah, for some reason in this app, it actually shows failed as of right now. The DRM info over here stays as L1, so you should not worry about it. You can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any worries. The Google Photos Unlimited backup should have been there, but it's not showing again. I have no idea why. In the Google Photos app, it does not show that it has the unlimited backup. But yeah, you can switch the quality to this original quality and store this saved if you want. And overall, while really driving, the experience has been good enough with the 120Hz and stuff. The whole UI stays buttery smooth. No issues whatsoever while opening apps and even while scrolling on Twitter and stuff, there is not a huge problem. Once the Twitter app loads, let me actually show you the scrolling. If you're noticing, is perfectly fine. It is really smooth experience, no issues whatsoever. Even switching between apps is not an issue. So yeah, overall, I would say the experience is good enough. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with the CPU stress test on this particular build, if you want to see that. So you should not worry about the overall daily driving performance, but some things are a little weird that it's not showing that it has the Google Photos Unlimited backup. It's showing that it is not passing safety net, but it actually works. The banking apps, I mean, are actually working. So this is how it is as of right now in February 2022. Even I think in the Evolution X ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro, on the second last update, it actually showed that safety net was failing because of Google, I would say. So that is how it is as of right now. But the banking apps and stuff are actually working. I have used them over here. So I would say yes, the Xnet XT version 4 for the Redmi Note 10 Pro at least, I would say it's still a really great option. It has decent amount of customization. It is really daily drivable and has some UI camera and stuff to daily drive with. And the camera quality is really good on this ROM. No issues whatsoever that you will face. Overall, I would say it's a really good experience of daily driving this ROM. Let me in the comments what you guys think about this Xtrend XT version 4 for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video to your friends if you want them to know about the latest build of the Xtrend XT version 4. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet, guys. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.